morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney. And I'm Karen. And as you can see today, um, Courtney's not going to be joining us, Courtney S. She's actually stuck in Detroit. So we're going to change up today's episode. Um, we actually have an exciting, different episode for you today. We're not going to talk about social media. We're going to hold that off until after the holidays. But we do have a special guest. Um, in addition to Karen here at the morning show, Andrea from ZSK Embroidery will be joining us today to talk a little bit about some of the things we're seeing in the embroidery industry, as well as some trends for 2017. So we're excited to share that insight with you guys as well. Um, we'll kick off today's look of the week. Um, these are all submitted through our show and tell um, that we do every week on our Saturday mornings on Facebook. So this one was submitted from Laura. So Laura Pellman from As You Wish Design submitted this really cute kind of group look. It's not just one shirt or one project like what we normally show. She has four different looks here and they are made out of fashion film and glitter flake. And I really like what she did here with all of the uh, different looks but really the same decoration concept. So she'll probably have a really easy time selling this to groups for schools, family pictures, pretty much anything for the holiday season really yes. in the spirit. It's such a unique um, take on the garment because we're not just using a shirt to say happy holidays or even make an ugly Christmas sweater. She really utilized the whole shirt to make something that looked like maybe a costume or a uniform that somebody would wear um, for the holidays or for a holiday party. So the mixed media aspect in addition to that really just creates a really eye-catching look. So it definitely caught my attention. I um, grabbed that from Facebook because I thought it'd be great to share for this one's look of the week. Yeah, I love that look. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of holiday printing for sure, so this yeah, season is just upon us. Um, and so what we want to do um, today before we talk with Andrew is we want to share week six of our seven, uh, seven markets you should be selling apparel to series. And so this week we're going to share some tips on selling directly to community events. There are a ton of community events in every large city and small city, and so it creates a great sales opportunity, and we'll share that video with you guys now. Welcome to this segment of seven markets that you should be selling apparel to. This time we're going to focus on community events and festivals in your local area. From 5Ks and marathons to local festivals like music festivals or food festivals, there are a ton of community events that happen in and around large cities and even small towns. This creates a great opportunity for selling apparel and different accessories to these different events. To get started, Create a calendar for these events that are going on in your local area, develop some pricing and packaging to sell to these events, and get ahead of the competition by bidding for event apparel or even looking at new revenue streams to bring into the event and to your business. Let's talk a little bit about the profit opportunities. The first one is going to be the most obvious, and that's printing apparel for the event itself. These are those free t-shirts or free bags that are given away when you attend an event, and they tend to be part of the ticket purchase when you're purchasing for this event. Um, so when it goes to selling after this market, to start making sales calls to, this, um, to these events is never early enough. So even if the event just ended for this year, you want to go ahead and give them a call, congratulate them on a successful event, and start getting your foot into the door for next year's apparel sales because they tend to start making decisions early for a lot of these local events, especially if it's a walk or a run that happens annually. In addition to this, when they're purchasing products or looking at suppliers, there's a few things to consider. Price and value are always really important whenever they're looking at the garment itself and what they're charging. This is a cost to the actual event itself if it's going to be a part of the ticket, so having something that's a lower cost but still a good value is going to be very important and we'll talk about that in garment and transfer selection since this will be a mass production type of capability. The other thing to consider when they're ordering is convenience and ease of ordering. So the person who's ordering the apparel for the event tends to be having a lot of different hats so they'll have a lot of different jobs to take care of. Selling apparel um, or, or ordering apparel and also packaging it and putting it out to the members who are participating is not going to be a huge key for them. So how can you as a supplier stand out apart from the other suppliers and making it more convenient for them? Maybe it's the way you package the products. Maybe it's in your customer service and delivery and the way that you deliver the products to them. Um, this is going to be key in winning jobs that you're bidding for by being able to show that you're different from the other suppliers in that aspect and you're going to make it easier for them. 
Let's talk a little bit about garment selection for the event itself. I mentioned you're going to want to choose a value blank, so think of something that's a little bit less expensive, maybe a Hanes blank or a Gildan, or something that's a private label like the Port & Company line from Sanmar. Um, you're going to want to keep the t-shirt or the bag very inexpensive, so usually 100% cotton or a 50-50 item will allow you to print for a lot of these events itself. Uh, when it comes to transfer selection or printing in general, this is mass production that we're talking about here. So we're looking at direct screen printing or screen printed transfers with a heat press. Both of these are going to allow you to be able to print for a lower cost and be able to print much more um, effectively and quicker than any other print technology because you're able to mass produce these items. So screen printed transfers and screen printing is definitely ideal, especially for the event itself t-shirts. When it comes to pricing, just remember to keep your value and your pricing low when you're showing the um, cost that you're going to be giving to the event. You'll likely be bidding against um, different suppliers for these types of garments and these types of jobs, so you want to make sure to be competitive in that. Um, if your pricing tends to be a little bit higher, always make sure that you're delivering the value and showing them the value that they're getting from using you as a supplier. Again, maybe it's the way you package those products so it's easier for them to distribute at the event, Maybe it's in the way that you deliver. Maybe you plan to um, package them and deliver them and hand them out at the event themselves to save them from having to have extra staff. There's different ways to um, make your business stand apart in that way. The second opportunity that we're going to look at is one that really presents the greatest opportunity for high revenue returns, and that's going to be printing on-site at the event itself or offering merchandise at the event or um, outside of the event to really commemorate and start to take in some revenue from the event that's happening in your local area. If this is the new opportunity and you're planning to do event printing or selling merchandise at the event, then you're obviously going to want to get buy-in from the event um, administrators. And so to do that, you may want to offer a kickback so any merchandise that you sell, they can have a percentage of that sell as well so that there's a benefit for them for you being there. Um, if you're going to offer a kickback like that, I do recommend making sure that your pricing allows for that so that you're still able to make the profit that you want to make on each item while still giving them a percentage of your sale. When choosing garments for selling merchandise at an event, you don't want to have too many choices for them to choose from um, because you'll basically be selling to the participants that are at the music festival or at the walk or run. And so I want to choose three to five items that are going to be trendy and that are going to be more unique and really fit the event that I'm printing for. So if I'm printing for a walk or a run, I tend to go towards performance wear, maybe a t-shirt, a tank top, a sweatshirt, and a pair of shorts. If I'm printing for a really trendy music festival or a food festival, maybe I have a tri-blend t-shirt or something that tends to fit a junior's market if that's the clientele that's going to be there. I want to sell the blank in the apparel that the audience there wants to purchase. Once I have my three to five items selected, the next choice is going to be transfer selection. For on-site event printing, heat printing is a huge benefit because you can take a heat press, take your transfers, and be able to customize on demand. That way you don't have to hold a ton of pre-printed inventory and it cuts your cost if for some reason the event has um, less of a turnout than expected. You don't get stuck with all those extra printed garments. So for this, I recommend either using screen printed transfers and taking those and printing them on site. They're very fast and easy to use. Another great opportunity is to offer on site personalization. So imagine being a walker or a run um, and having the ability to put your name or your time on a bag or a t-shirt. To do this, you're going to want to use a vinyl cutter and heat transfer vinyl. That'll allow you to easily create the artwork, send it to the cutter, and customize. And you can do a quick turnaround there for them and sell it at a higher price because it's personalized and it's unique. It's something they cannot get at any other location and allows them to commemorate the event. For pricing strategy when you're looking at selling in this method, first if you're going to be selling this to the actual event staff, you want to make sure they're able to see a document that shows the profit that they're going to be able to get by having you at their location in a pop-up tent printing or selling merchandise. If you're selling this directly to those participants, then you're going to want to price these items a little bit higher because of course these are going to be higher end items and they're going to be 
on-demand printing. And so you're going to be offering something that they can't get anywhere else. And it's going to be kind of that um, really able to drive the um, price up because they're more likely to pay more at an event than they would be if they were in a local retail store purchasing something. Also make sure that if you're having a boost display that your pricing and your signage and your offerings are available. So if you're offering custom printing, make sure to broadcast that. That's a huge selling benefit. Also make sure the pricing is easily able to see. Maybe display the garment designs that you have set up and display pricing with it. That way it's easy for the customer to make a buying decision and they don't feel that they have to ask or do any research to really see what it's going to cost them to purchase that item. To find customers for this type of location, or for these types of sales opportunities, I recommend looking at a um, 90 to 120 mile radius of your local area, whether you're in a small town or a large city. Look for community events in the area. Um, in most cities, um, especially larger cities, tend to have what they call a visit website, so it may be visitpittsburgh.com, where you can find all of their community events. So a quick Google search of community events in Indianapolis, Indiana could find me the community event website for that location. I can easily create my calendar for that. If you're looking towards walks and runs and that's the market that you want to go to, active.com also has a ton of um, ways for you to sort by city or mile radius and find the walks and runs that are going to be in your area. Again, from there, create your calendar and start to plan your approach for sales calls and packaging towards these markets. Community events, festivals, all of these create great opportunities for you to start diving in and making profit for ongoing revenue streams and for the event itself. So take a look at this growing market and we'll see you on our next segment of seven markets that you should be selling apparel to. So that was week six of our seven week series. Um, we're actually going to con continue that series after the holidays. Um, so you'll get to see the seventh market there. Um, if you want to re-see any of those markets, we do have them available on stallstv.com as well for all of the six of seven markets that we've been sharing with you guys throughout the morning show. Um, as you can see, I have traded in Karen <laughs> for Andrea from ZSK. If you're just joining us um, on Facebook Live or on our GoTo client, then um, you've probably missed that we actually have a special guest here in the studio. Andrea from ZSK Embroidery is here this week working on some videos that we'll be sharing with you guys soon on StylesTV.com. And so while she's here, we thought we would go ahead and take the time to talk a little bit about um, the embroidery industry, things that we're seeing, share some tips and trends there, and really give you um, some different ideas that we're seeing for 2017. Um, and so Andrea, you have been in the embroidery industry and in the apparel decorating industry for um, quite some time. You've pretty much grown up in this um, different industry. and so you share a different type of insight that we don't te technically usually have here on the morning show, so we're excited to have you. Um, do you mind sharing some of your background, your experience with our Stalls TV audience? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's a real treat to, to be a guest on the morning show here. Um, just a little bit about me. My name, again, is Andrea, and I work with the ZSK Machines. And uh, I've been, I've grown up in this industry actually since my grandfather. Um, so I, I had the embroidery needle and thread in my blood. Um, I've been doing it, you know, as we say, full time for approximately 15 years. And I, I've really immersed myself with uh, working with customers, working with techniques, processes, um, and also, you know, working in the, the marketing side, uh, understanding new trends, uh, new niches that that can uh, de that develop throughout the industry. Um, so I, I've been very lucky. I've been able to travel to different parts of the world to actually see all these new things develop. And and uh, one of my passions is helping customers with understanding processes and um, and and how we can grow businesses. Right. Yeah. So you've been, I know I've seen you for quite a few years over trade shows yes. and education. <laughs> and so um, you definitely speak with a lot of embroiders and have kind of a unique insight um, into what's going on in the embroidery industry. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, 2017 is literally just around the corner. Oh gosh, yeah. And so this is a time where a lot of people are looking for trends or looking for insights or looking for tips. Um, so what are some of the popular 
trends that we're seeing when it comes to finishes and applications for embroidery? Yeah, um, one of the big things that I see and that I've seen develop is over the years is, is thread. And you can see we have a couple uh, thread cones here. These are by Madeira. They are uh, metallic thread. Um, typically what we see in the industry and what we see in logos and, and basic embroidery work is polyester thread or rayon thread. And it has a, a specific finish. It's nice and shiny and it looks, it looks very pretty. But throughout the years, the industry has created new threads with new finishes that have given us a lot of leeway to work with, um, you know, different uh, combinations of thread. So using like a metallic thread um, really gives a, a unique look. Um, using, we have thread that is like a matte finished thread. So it's not as shiny, but it's more matte. And utilizing um, these threads with, you know, different materials for things like applique, and I know we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, you can come up with some really unique items. Um, there's also a thread that's, uh, again, it's by Madeira. It's called Burmilana, but it's almost like a, a wool, very thick thread. So it almost looks like a hand stitching. So we can create uh, a very cool look um, that almost emulates hand stitching or that needle craft with an embroidery machine. Um, so one of the things that I encourage people to do is go look at the different thread finishes and things like that because you can combine the different threads together. You know, you don't have to use just one type of thread, um, but using it together and um, really opening the door to, to new looks. Um, another thing, and, and I, you know, this with the metallic thread, we do have this little, uh, my, this is my, my new favorite design uh, that we created. Um, it is an applique, but it does have metallic thread uh, used in the applique. Um, this is regular polyester, and this is the metallic. So in utilizing different threads, we can give that different dimension. Um, and that kind of leads into my next point, which is uh, mixed media. You know, and I know we've talked a lot about mixed media, and I love that, that I'm here because we are able to, you know, utilize the, the heat press with the embroidery machine and cutters and things like that. And there's so many unique looks that you can, you can get with the mixed media, one of which is, is of course, applique. Um, so mixed media utilizing, um, you can utilize the heat press with uh, screen print transfers and combining the embroidery with it. Um, we have this design here, it's got the rhinestones on it and that's done with the heat press, you know, nothing special. Um, so mixed media, you know, combining things not only give you a unique look, but it can also help with decreasing production time because you're utilizing the media to uh, replace stitches. And um, kind of the last thing, you know, as far as, you know, trends for 2017 is unique placement. Um, you know, I know you see that in the heat, yeah. the heat press industry, but unique placement, um, you know, putting things in, in, in places that we didn't think of before. You know, I have this pair of shoes here. We've got, uh, first of all, we've got a monogram on the front, and then we have, this is for a gymnastics club, and this is the name of the gym or the letters of the gym on the side here. So this was actually created for a gymnastics team. They have black warm-ups and they wanted the black shoes to go with it. They uh, branded their shoes with the SLGC and these are little girls. These are six-year-old girls that we're doing this with. So having their monogram on the front, they know which shoe is theirs. So that's kind of a, a nice thing. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a double, um, we, we've got two reasons here why we embroidered it. One, to brand it, and two, to uh, keep the girls in line with their shoes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something we see in the embroidery and heat printing industry. It's personalization, it's unique placement, it's mixed media, all that stuff really is what's um, allowing a lot of decorators to stand apart. We'll talk about it a little bit. We see that just with the monogramming and everything, mm -hmm. and I know um, one of the themes for your visit is going to be mixed media, so we're going to share a lot of different mixed media applications through video. Um, on stallstv.com, so you'll have to take a look and check out those as well. Um, so we've talked a little bit about finishes, but I think the end of 2016, the start of a new year, mm -hmm. is always a good time for people to think about what investment should I make in technology or attachments or things like that to kind of expand my business. So are there certain um, technology advancements or attachments that you think that embroiderers should be taking um, 
control of or taken advantage of? Well, you know, with, um, you know, there, there's a lot of different things to look at, especially on the machine side. Um, first of all, one of the things to look at is with the machinery and what's available are the attachments, or actually I should say the accessories, um, that are constantly developing and constantly coming out. And, you know, this leads back into that shoe right here is that we do have a special frame for the shoe, you know, holding that shoe onto, um, you can't do this with a, a traditional hoop. So, you know, companies, not only the machine manufacturers, but also aftermarket companies are coming out with very unique uh, frames to, in, you know, in order to decorate for this unique placement. So that's one thing. You know, one thing with, with ZSK, and of course I'm going to talk about ZSK a little bit, is that they have a lot of unique frames that they build specifically for customer needs. So a customer will come up to them with a need and they'll say, I need this specific you know, placement and they'll come up with a very specialty frame. But again, there are aftermarket uh, companies that do come up with it. Um, and then, you know, I, I did use the word attachment before, um, but with attachments, that's more along the line of what we can add to embroidery. Um, we are able to do different uh, attachments um, that allow for decoration using embroidery technology. And what I mean by that is uh, there are things like uh, sequins, and those are those round mylar, you typically see it on costuming and things like that. It's another way to do bling. Uh, we have cording. We have um, something that's kind of really unique, especially in the, um, the applique industry, but a hot air cutter. Um, we have something called boring, which I always tell people it's not boring, <laughs> but it's uh, actually cut, doing cut work. Um, so there are attachments for the machinery that allow for uh, an entrance into different markets, especially what I see with sequins is in the, um, the tourist market, the costuming market, and things like that. So um, when you're looking at your machine, see what you can expand on that machine. Um, you know, because there are just a lot of different things that you can do. Another thing is the, the machine design. Um, with, with our machinery, um, there have been developments to allow you to do things like this. You know, th this is a very small shoe, and um, you can see that it is the, the placement is pretty far down on the shoe. So, and it, I'm sure it's just like with heat presses, you know, just the machinery developments that come out and um, that, that can change, that allow you to do and, um, you know, offer these, these unique things. Um, one other thing to, to really look out for for 2017 is workflow processes. Um, we are seeing more and more online shops that are connecting suppliers with embroiderers. Um, online fulfillment and things like that. So that's another big thing to, to look at in specifically in the embroidery industry. Yeah, that's a great point as well. And even you know, for people that are looking to maybe purchase new equipment or make advancements for the new year, it's kind of like the way we talk about heat press equipment. Um, where we always talk about if you're looking to make a new investment, look at a machine that's going to allow you to grow, um, that's going to allow you to do some of these different things that maybe we're seeing trending for the upcoming years. Maybe it's special effects, maybe it's sequins, maybe it's rhinestones. Being able to have different capabilities like that is really a huge benefit, different placements um, and all of that as well. Um, and so another thing that we, we talk a lot about here on The Morning Show are blank apparel um, trends. And so one of the trends that we've seen over the last few years really is performance wear, athleisure, these polyester light garments. And so um, any tips, I know I've always heard challenges with people decorating them with, I mean, any print technology, mm -hmm. um, but any tips for embroidery specifically for these? Absolutely. Um, with with ath you know athletic wear and things like that, we do come into a, a new type of material. It's stretchy, it's thin, you know, it's not that fun to work with when you, when you are embroidering or decorating with it. So making sure that you do have the right recipe is going to be a very big thing. And um, tap into, you know, the, the knowledge base of a lot of people, you know, like myself and other educators that are available. Um, and it can be uh, from digitizing technique, meaning the design creation, to uh, the 
actual preparation of the material. And that means the backing and the thread and the needles that you do have to use. Um, with athletic material, the polyester, it's very stretchy. So it's important that you have it nice and, um, and taut and stabilized. And so that's where your backing kind of comes into play making sure that you have, sometimes making sure that you have a topping um, will make it give a nice finish, especially when you have that, that larger weave into the fabric um, because that needle is going to fall into that weave. So having a topping, which is typically water soluble, it will create a barrier to the top of that fabric and, uh, and create a, a nicer um, you know, needle path into the, the threat, or in, I'm sorry, into the material. So there are a lot of different things that you, um, you know, that you want to make sure of when you are embroidering and because it is a difficult fabric. <laughs> yeah, some good points as well. Um, so definitely performance wear is another trend. And then one thing that we talk about a lot in the morning show um, at Salt TV, it's I, I think one of the largest trends in personalization, it's monogramming. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys see it from the embroidery side, we see it from the heat transfer side. Um, and it's just, it's expanded. We've seen it here on a pair of shoes simply because it's a popular way to add personalization and make each item unique. Um, and so are there any unique tips or trends, ideas that we're seeing kind of in that marketplace for embroidery? Yeah, absolutely. Um, monogramming is something that has been around for years and it's not going away anytime soon. Um, what I see with monogramming is just more unique things that are coming out with the monogramming. Number one, unique placement. I know we've we've touched on this. Um, you know, you can see on the on the front of the shoe here. You know, that's something that I don't commonly see. Um, doing it on shoes, on boots, um, on different places, on like um, a jacket. Let's say maybe on the the yoke. You know, mm -hmm. the the neck yoke or um, just different things like that. But it also leads into the um, ability to do. Um, mixed media with uh, monogramming, you know, with the applique. I'm seeing more and more, more on the women's side, um, left chest logos, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the left chest um, design that has either like a, a glitter rip away or something special, you know, with a pattern or, or a fabric or something like that. That seems to be a very, very big thing. And um, in and, and using the different threads too. So there's, there's a lot of room to grow with monogramming. Um, monogramming and just on the cutter side or the heat press side, we're seeing monograms on the back of cars, on, yeah. you know, on everything it seems like. Everything's monogrammed. Yeah, it seems like everything in 2017 will be monogrammed. Right. And so <laughs> I think there's, a, like you said, there's a lot of room for decorators to grow that do this with applique finishes, um, with being able to mix some of the ripaway applique that Stalls offers. Um, along with some patterns and different effects. And so a lot of fun things that we'll be sharing with you guys through Stalls TV on that as well um, coming up. And then before we take some questions, the only other thing I really wanted to dial the in on here that I think our audience would really benefit from is um, you know, each year every decorator takes, I think, the start of a new year to think fresh where you're thinking, mm -hmm. what, can I, what changes can I make to either my pricing or my costing or my workflow? to make things run more smoothly. Price competition is one of the biggest issues um, in the decorating industry as, in general, but it's obviously very um, prominent in embroidery. So what mm -hmm. um, do you have recommendations for decorators that want to kind of be competitive and win more jobs this year? Yeah, and um, you know, you bring up a great point. You know, people are wanting to be cost competitive. Um, you want to be cost competitive, but without sacrificing, um, you know, sacrificing quality. And things to do to be cost, you know, competitive can be things from uh, design digitizing practices to, you know, thread application. And what I mean by that is um, there's thread that is a heavier weight thread um, that you could actually use to cut down on, um, on thread count. And I apologize, let me back up for a second. Typically with embroidery, when we price things out, it's uh, done based on stitch count. And that's because that's going to um, determine how long your machine is going to be running and you know that's taking up production time. So how can we lessen that production time? How can we produce more? And that would be cutting down you know, stitch count. Um, we can cut down stitch count by uh, different things in digitizing like lengthening our, our stitch 
uh, our average stitch length. So if you imagine, and it, it can be like a half of a millimeter, it can actually bring things down quite a bit. Using a thicker thread um, can also fill up that area using less stitches because you're using a thicker thread. Um, one of the big things that I see, especially in big, bigger designs or jacket back designs, is utilizing the applique technique. And utilizing applique, there are a lot of different materials that you can use that either emulate thread or um, give a really unique look um, by replacing all those stitches. Because if you can imagine, let's say you've got a five by five area that's all filled with stitches, well, replacing applique with it is going to bring down your production time quite a bit. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can do, you know, and and um, in, in decreasing that cost. So it is looking at your workflow, it is looking at um, what types of things you are doing and how we can keep that quality, but bringing down the production time, because that's really a lot of where our costs come into play. Yeah, and we work with a lot of embroiderers that um, have used applique or start to use applique to cut their costs. And um, for those of you who are thinking about that option, just keep in mind, Stalls does offer um, custom cutting services so we can cut any applique for you to embroider, mm -hmm. cut those costs, um, and help you really become more cost effective on a lot of designs. Um, Taylor, if I had some questions coming in throughout the morning show we could answer before we head out. They would like to know where they can um, contact Andrea, either an email or website or social media. Yeah, my email address is just Andrea, which is A-N-D-R-E-A, -E at Z-S-K, so Zebra Sam Kite, machines, with an S, dot com. Perfect. Any other questions? All right, great. Um, so like I said, Andrea, we appreciate you coming on to the morning show here uh, last minute and just kind of sharing your insight. I think it's been really valuable for our Stalls TV audience. We certainly appreciate it. Um, next week, for those of you guys that are joining us, um, we will be doing our live Q&A episode. So at the end of the uh, morning show, if you want to chat in some questions that you want answers to next week, we'll be doing that live through Facebook as well as through the GoToMeeting um, client that we use through stallstv.com. So we will see you guys then. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.